By the time this video ends, I'll have earned the Platinum Trophy and 100% completion in The Last of Us Part 1 and Part 2 Remastered, but I'm doing them both on Grounded. I literally don't know how I'm gonna do this. In order to earn 100% completion, I have to find over 400 collectibles, upgrade every weapon, beat two DLCs, and survive a Grounded Permadeath playthrough. Just run, just run, just run. Oh shit! No. The game actually recommends that you don't use the grounded difficulty for your first playthrough, as not only is it a daunting experience, but it makes it really difficult to get any of these grindy trophies like Chronicles, Master of Unlocking, or Don't Go. But I'm not really one to heed warnings, so we're gonna go in on grounded anyways. The Last of Us Part 1 begins with Joel Miller and his daughter Sarah, where we take control of Sarah and walk downstairs to find her dad. Joel runs into the house and gets attacked by a neighbor who seems to have gone crazy, and after shooting the guy, Joel's brother Tommy shows up and the three ride away in his truck, only to get into an accident and be forced to make a run for it. After making what looks like to be a successful escape, this happens. Oh, this breaks my soul. It hurts a lot more because I have a daughter. That is literally the worst nightmare. That is, that is like the worst thing you could ever imagine as a parent. Fast forward 20 years later and now a 56 year old Joel is a smuggler in Boston with his partner Tess and Tess tells him that she was attacked so the pair go hunting for the guy who set her up. While hunting him down I found several collectibles including a firefly pendant earning the first trophy of the game. So I have to make sure that I am collecting every single thing I can. Oh hey. David Michael Virgil. Alright so we got a, flyer, a firefly pendant. And that's our first trophy, Fallen Firefly, for getting the Firefly Pendant, the very first one. After finding and subsequently killing Robert, we run into Marlene, the leader of a militia organization called the Fireflies, and Marlene has a smuggling job for us that is way different from any job they've ever done, as the cargo that needs smuggling is a 14-year-old girl named Ellie. Marlene needs Joel to take Ellie to the Fireflies at the Capitol building, but she doesn't tell us what makes the girl so special or why we have to take her there. We make our way to the outskirts of town and immediately have to deal with Fedra guards and find out the reason Ellie needs smuggled. After killing the guards, we learn that she is immune to the virus turning everyone else into zombies, as evidenced by a mark on her arm that she claims is three weeks old. Shortly after this, I began to finally feel the pain of grounded difficulty. Who did they see? Because there's no way they saw me. There's no way they saw me go into that building at, at first. Turn the other way. Turn the other way. Turn around. What? Hey, Tess. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? After that, we came to a building filled with bodies of dead Fedra agents and came into contact for the first time with one of the most unnerving sounds in video game history, clickers. Uh, that's not good. That's not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Ugh. Yeah. Gross. Eventually, we made our way to the museum, which was also filled with infected, and fought our way to a clear line of sight of the Capitol building. At the Capitol, though, things had gone very, very wrong. The fireflies we were meant to meet there had already been killed, and Tess revealed that she had been bitten and would turn soon, so she offers to sacrifice herself so Joel and Ellie can escape. Joel has now lost his daughter. We don't know anything about Sarah's mother. His mother is never mentioned either, so I assume she's dead. And now Tess, who he clearly had a relationship, is gone, and you really have to feel for the guy. Ellie and Joel escape the Capitol building and headed down to the bus station where Ellie doesn't have to wear a mask while breathing in spores, proving to Joel that she was telling the truth about being immune. Joel says he knows someone that owes him a favor, and we set out for Bill, who ends up saving us after accidentally setting off one of his traps. Jesus Christ, kid, come on! That was a little too close for comfort. Come on, get off, 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 get off. Square! I'm pressing square! Ah. Oh, hey, it's Bill. Hey, Bill. After we made it back to his safe house, he put Ellie in handcuffs and pulled his pistol on Joel, but Ellie quickly breaks free and hits him with a lead pipe. Bill is a bit of an eccentric, well, okay, let's just say it, Bill's a crazy asshole. Going through an apocalyptic event can definitely make you a hardened individual, but this guy has issues that run way deeper than that. Joel tries to call in his favor and tells Bill that he needs a car so they can leave the city, and Bill tells him that he doesn't have one, but relents, and the three go on a search for a battery. As we were walking out of the safe house, I grabbed this training manual, it being our first one, to earn the self-help trophy collectibles like super late in the chapter i have to replay an entire section of a chapter the part sucks um, so 
That's just one of those things. Oh, self-help. Wait. What was that? Find one training manual. I actually did not know that that was a trophy. That legitimately caught me off guard. Leaving Bill's safe house, he tells us the location of a car battery inside a nearby school, but the way there is overrun with infected and it makes the path extremely tough to get there. Unfortunately, getting into the school isn't any better because not only is the battery we were looking for gone, but there were also several more infected inside and our first run in with a bloater, which are the hardest infected to take out in this game. Shit. Cause obviously big man is my, my target. Keep running, keep running, keep running. Quickly heal. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Run, Joel, run. Ha. Huh? Oh my god. Headshots only. Oh my god, did we kill it? Oh, we did it. After making it out of that fight, we evade some runners and enter the home of Frank, who is Bill's former partner. Honestly, I don't know how so many people didn't realize that Bill and Frank being partners meant that they were a couple. So many people got outraged and bent out of shape at the show like, oh, f you, you made them gay for TV. But that's literally how it always was. Frank and Bill were together. If you didn't get that, I'm sorry. Stop being angry at things on the internet for nothing. Ellie finds the battery we were looking for in Frank's truck, and I discovered a note that Frank wrote for Bill. Bill read it and in either disgust or heartbreak, he ended up throwing it on the ground, but I picked it back up so that way I can have a read when I think my life sucks, just to remind me that things could be worse. Not just yet, because I'm going to pick this back up off the ground in memoriam. Well, Bill, we picked up the letter a second time after Bill crumbled it and threw it to the ground which gives us the in memoriam trophy. We got the truck moving, but had to fend off a group of infected as Ellie tried to get it started. And after a cutscene with Ellie reading a magazine she stole from Bill's, we end up in Pittsburgh. Due to my personal bias being from there, the Pittsburgh chapter is my favorite in the game. Even without the bias, I think it's still one of the most beloved chapters amongst fans, but feel free to tell me otherwise. A man seemingly in need of help tries to stop the truck, but Joel realizes it's a trap and ends up driving into a pharmacy and we have to fire our way out of there, but the fight has only just begun. Bandits have overrun the entire city, causing it to basically be a non-stop fight throughout the entire chapter. After taking out the first group at the pharmacy, we come to a road filled with abandoned vehicles, and one of them happens to be a school bus that has a Savage Starlight comic book inside it. Oh, good. Something else you can drive me crazy with. Here we go. Star or Savage Starlight fan. I almost read that backwards. I'm not dyslexic, I swear. The Fedra checkpoint here is a pretty tough section because you have to either stealth your way through or fight off at least a dozen enemies, and considering you'll have next to no ammo the entire time on grounded, it can be less than fun. Getting through there brought me to the hotel, which also had a ton of enemies, but they're far more spaced out, so stealth is a really viable option to make it through. Unfortunately, making it past the bandits brings us to one of my least favorite areas in the game because it's just so unsettling. Stuck under the building, we have to power on the generator and use a key card to unlock a door, but that door is guarded by a handful of stalkers and another bloater that I had really no interest in trying to fight, but almost got stuck into fighting it anyways. Shotgun out might be my only opportunity to make this work. Come on. No, f you. Quickly. Joel, what don't you understand about quickly, mother? Get out, get out, get out. No, 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 no. No, what are you doing? Joel, you dumb son of a bitch, get out of the room. Oh. <gasps> We made it out to find more bandits and Joel almost gets killed here, but thankfully Ellie saves us at the last possible moment. There were really three points in the game where I accrued the majority of the deaths that I had in this playthrough and this area was one of them. I don't remember the number offhand, but during this spot, I definitely died at least 20 times, most of which were because I thought my back was covered when in fact it wasn't and I got shot in the back of the head. Stealth becomes incredibly important again during the next area as we were being hunted by an enemy tank that ends up being a thorn in our side for quite some time. After our initial escape from the tank, we have a very quick and rocky meeting with Henry and Sam, two brothers who also happen to be looking for the fireflies. 
The group decides it's better to have numbers and begin to travel together, bringing us to a section with a trophy that is technically missable without the ability to go back and replay chapters. Lights Out requires us to turn off the spotlight generator without being seen by the guards, and the way I did this was I took out the first two guards with Henry, then snuck outside, went to the far right, making sure to only move when the middle guard was facing away. He does do a little spin move where he checks back where he was walking from, so if you can avoid that, you're pretty much golden. And if you time it just right, you can sneak in there and pop the trophy. Or if you're like me, you can time it just right, pop the trophy, and then immediately get killed and have to do the whole section again. He switched up his cadence on the turnaround. Turn it off, Joel. Oh my god, we did it. Lights out. Lights out. Trophy earned. Who the f*** just shot me? The tank is back and Henry decides to run away with Sam, bailing on us and after a narrow escape they end up coming back to save us from certain death. Back together the group heads into the sewer and after fighting through some infected come to a room where it seems they're stuck. Diving under the water there's something blocking the gate and once I got into the room I climbed up the ladder and knocked down the trusty wooden pallet. Once Ellie was about to turn on the generator on the other side of the room I had to quickly swim back and get on the platform with Henry and Sam or I would have missed out on the waterlogged trophy. A little later in the tunnel we end up getting separated and see Henry and Ellie being chased away by clickers while Joel and and Sam have to deal with some stalkers. Fighting each other again leads to a mad dash out of the building, but Joel and Henry get stuck inside fighting off a small horde while Ellie and Sam get the door open from the outside. Oh my god. Yeah, Henry, I can't really help you, brother. Run. Let me out! Oh. A bit further up ahead, we enter a small town and I'm finally able to finish upgrading my trusty 9mm pistol and then entered the house next door to open the final safe. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, 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 I can upgrade my pistol to max now. Hold the phone here. Hold the phone here, brother. One plus two magazine capacity, which is dope. And then two combat ready. That's a max upgraded weapon. That is a silver trophy. That's actually a W. All right. Oh, eight. Nope. 21. And 36. Got it. Oh, yo, that's actually huge. Sticky fingers. Was that, wait, was that the last safe? That's all the safes are. I'm like not close to the end of the game, am I? Down the street, we end up being targeted by a sniper with the greatest aim of all time. I'm talking 400 confirmed kills aim. After using my stealth skills, I went into the building and took over sniping duties, knocking bandit after bandit after bandit until finally putting an end to the tank. The Last of Us games are emotional roller coasters, and sections like this are exactly what I'm talking about when I say that. I'm not going to show you exactly what happens, but I'll explain it for those who may not have played the game before and want to know. Basically, Sam was bitten during the sniper section and ends up turning in the morning, which led to his brother Henry putting him down. Unable to stand himself for what he just did, Henry decides to also take himself out at that moment, and experiencing that firsthand was so gut-wrenching that I decided to take a bit of a break after it was done just because it was so heavy. Even though I knew that was going to happen, that is still one of the saddest deaths in video game history, and I'm... That's so heartbreaking, man. Sometime later, we arrive in Jackson County, just outside of a hydroelectric dam, where I was able to pop two more trophies. Nice. Well, give me something worthwhile. Solid. Solid. I need explosives, because I think the only... Oh, 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 oh. Yes, that was it. That's the only thing I had left to craft, so that's geared up for crafting everything. All right. Nice. Hey, be careful crossing that thing. Yeah, oh, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're fine. How does she want a high five? No. Yep. All right. Let's see yes, I am. Just Left hanging. We did not high five the child. <laughs> Things got a little emotional again when we reached the dam because we found out that Joel's brother Tommy was there after the two hadn't spoken in several years. As Tommy's showing us around, we took a moment to stop and recognize a good boy. Is that a puppy? You sound like Marlene. That's a doggo. Hi, doggo. That's Buckley. Not much of a guard dog. No, you're good to have Aww. him. I'm glad that the dogs <laughs> didn't turn boy. into zombies, too. That would have been awful. Who's a good boy? Buckley's a good boy. 
Yes, he is. Yes, you are. Okay. And in what I think is the most aggravating story plot development in the game, Joel pulls Tommy aside to ask that he take Ellie the rest of the way to find the Fireflies, since not only was he once a Firefly himself and may know where they are, but also because Joel is clearly afraid of growing more attached to Ellie and losing her. She ends up running away to a ranch house where she and Joel have a heated argument where he says one of the most heartbreaking lines in the game, It's like Spongebob when he was telling Mystery, get out of here. Can't you see nobody wants you anymore? That hurt just as bad. And all of that was completely for nothing because as soon as Tommy tells Joel that the Fireflies have a lab at the University of Eastern Colorado, Joel tells Ellie to get off her horse and the pair start back on their journey together. Why? The university has seemingly been abandoned, but this doesn't mean the path to the lab will be any easier. After getting to a gate that needs to be powered on, Joel decides to look for a way around so he can turn on the power and eventually goes down through a hole in the floor to find a group of infected. At the end of this hallway is another bloater, and I was really, really unprepared for this fight. <laughs> off. Oh, what the f so I had to make some moves. After using a smoke bomb to lure the infected into a room, I threw a bomb to put a few of them out of their misery, and after clearing them out, I had enough space to sneak my way to the back of the hall where I could have probably snuck out, but that bloater just happens to have a firefly pendant, and since I have to collect all of those, I put my newly acquired flamethrower to good use. We made it to the lab, but unfortunately it's empty, but luckily we find a note telling us that the fireflies are located at the St. Mary's Hospital in Seattle. After nearly getting shot, we made our way back out of the lab where I used an upgraded machete to rip through a few enemies, and once it broke, I got build him up, break him down. He's over here. Oh, well, that so much for that. Still got him. Don't break. Oh, it did break. Damn it. I was hoping it wouldn't break there. Take him out. Oh, well, we, hey, we got the trophy. Build him up, break him down. So, did what I was hoping to accomplish. Uh, it was just not, not the timing I wanted it to be. Joel ends up getting impaled and nearly killed after a run in with more bandits, and with Ellie's help, we escape on Callus. Fast forward to the winter, and Joel is still in bad shape, so we take control of Ellie trying to find some food and medicine. After hunting down a deer, she ends up running into a guy named David who offers to trade medicine for the deer. As soon as David's friend leaves to go get the medicine, though, we're immediately attacked by infected in what ends up being a long battle taking up an entire building. At the end of that fight, a bloater shows up to put the finishing touches on it, and during the cutscene after this, it's revealed that David and his people have been hunting Ellie and Joel ever since some of their men were killed back sometime before this meeting. Proving to be a man of his word, David gave Ellie the medicine and we took it back to Joel, but it didn't take long for his men to show up and try to seek their revenge. Ellie figures the best bet for Joel's safety is to jump on Callus's back and ride away to distract the hunters, but Callus ends up being shot and we have to fight through the remaining men and make it back to the cabin. After seemingly finishing off the last of them, David appears out of nowhere and takes Ellie hostage back to their settlement, where it's quickly revealed that these freaks are not only cannibals diving on human meat, but that David is an absolutely sick that's clearly trying to prey on Ellie. After rejecting his advances and biting him, David decides that it's time to cut her up into tiny pieces. As that happens, Joel wakes up and we resume activities as him trying to find out where the girl has gone. We run through the town and tour through David's men, capturing and torturing the final two for information on where to find her, and then immediately switch back to Ellie, who reveals that she's infected and the bite she put on David means he is too, so he looks at his hand, and while he does that, Ellie takes advantage by killing his friend James and escapes. Sneaking our way past all of the guards, we come to a restaurant and like clockwork as we go to exit the door, David pops back in and unintentionally sets the place on fire. After a game of cat and mouse where we stab him three times, we get switched back to Joel now traveling through a blizzard and quickly make our way outside of the restaurant on fire as the scene cuts back to Ellie on the ground and a race for David's machete ensues and well, it's safe to say Ellie won. You have no idea what I'm capable of. I think I do. I think we've kind of figured it out. Slice him, slice him, slice him. Yes. Oh! <laughs> finally, after everything we've been through, we made it to Seattle, and finally, this is where it felt like the trophy hunt really began for me. In one of the coolest moments in the game, Ellie, who had really been dejected recently, ran away from Joel in excitement, and once we caught up to her, we found out that there was a herd of giraffes walking around the building, providing a slight sense of the old days before everything went to hell. At the Fedra tents, I walked in and grabbed my fifth and final toolbox, but then the realization set in. I think that's the last one, actually.
I think with that one, I have all five of them. Is that not a trophy? I ended up not collecting all of the toolboxes in one playthrough, meaning I had to go back via chapter select and collect all of them at one time. So for me, that meant going back and replaying the last three and a half chapters in order to get the final two toolboxes. So I officially went back, uh, did a chapter select where I had already three of the toolboxes and have played the whole way through, got the fourth. This should be the fifth, which means it should give me the trophy this time. Uh, I hope so, because if not, I just wasted like an hour and 20 minutes of my life getting back here. So. Pop that trophy. Please, for the love of God, pop that trophy. Sharpest tool in the shed. Thank you so much. The final stretch before making it to the hospital is potentially the single scariest area in the entire game. Entering an abandoned tunnel, I came across three bloaters, several clickers, even more runners, and I didn't feel like we were going to make it out of there for a bit, but a solid mix of stealth, skills, and following the rules of the apocalypse got me out of there. Once all of them were handled, I quickly went and popped two more trophies. Ugh. Shrapnel, chapter 13. Oh, that was the last journal too. Something to fight for. W, what did I just throw? Another workbench, that's a W. Oh, that's the last one too, sick, prepared for the worst. Starting to get these trophies off the board anyways. We barely survived the final stretch before the hospital, especially after the fireflies knocked us out, but we woke up in a hospital bed where Marlene told us that Ellie is going to die from the surgery, but it's the only way to potentially find a cure, so the sacrifice must be made. But if you've played The Last of Us, you know that Papa Joel don't play about his Ellie. It was time to go and save her one final time. I did manage to find and open the final shiv door while also collecting the final firefly pendant inside to grab two more trophies. All right, let's open the shiv door which should be the last shiv door master of unlocking perfect that's a big old gg and then we have that firefly pendant right there which should also be the last one of those if i'm not if i'm not mistaken uh so that's gonna be for Byroni stewart sume sume Byroni, Byroni. look for the light all firefly pendants have been found as well. But then came the second most frustrating area of the game for me. I entered this section with 98 deaths, looking like I could actually beat the game on grounded with less than 100, but the game had other plans. I tried method after method after method, but nothing seemed to work, so I had to think outside of the box. I went back and forth between the hallway and the previous room, strategically taking out all of the enemies one by one. My plan was working beautifully until... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Have to move back a little bit. No! No! Why? But thankfully, it only set me back a few moments rather than at the beginning. Finally, after 25 deaths in the area and making it through the hallway, it was time to enter the OR and put an end to this madness. Oh, man. Here we go. Sweet Jesus. Doctor? What are you doing? Come on. I'm stopping you. you I'm stopping you. This you just let her off the table. No one has to die. Come on. Don't come any closer. I mean it. I don't care. I don't care. This fucking animal. Yeah. You want to see an animal? I'll kill you too. You want to see an animal? You'll die right now as well. We got to go. You can't save her. Oh, come on, Marlene. Even if you get her out of here, then what? How long before she's torn to pieces by a pack of clickers? She won't be. That is, if she hasn't been raped and murdered first. She won't be that either. Ain't for you to decide. It's what she'd want. In the pre-credits scene, we see that Joel put Marlene down for good and lies to Ellie about what happened back at the hospital. Regaining control over Ellie, we walked over to an abandoned truck for the final Savage Starlight comic. Truck's open. Oh, is that our final comic book it looks like yep should be our last one savage starlight singularity is that the last one there you go endure and survive my soul is being ripped in half no matter what we have officially beaten part one but i wasn't done just yet I had one more challenge in my way, that being the Left Behind DLC. At the start, Ellie is actively searching for medicine to give to Joel inside a mall, and the prequel starts there as we meet Riley, who tells us that she joined the Fireflies and wants to spend more time with Ellie. The two spending time together is really fun and playful as they play games throughout the entire mall. There we go. Yes! Rick fucking Masters! 
That was annoying. I am now the brick master, but there was like, why were there no bricks? I had to look so hard to find bricks. But back to the present day, we fought through some infected to turn on the power and made our way onto a helicopter where thankfully we found a fully intact med kit for Joel. Flashing back again, Riley showed Ellie a carousel and we told the last of Ellie's jokes. Boo. I've loved that joke since I was a child. I don't even, that joke is, that's great. I've loved that joke since I was a wee lad. That's all I got. That's all I got. All the jokes are done. We've survived all of Ellie's jokes. The final optional conversation takes place when we went into a photo booth taking some silly pictures, and then in the arcade we did a brief simulation of one of the worst games ever made, Jack X Combat Racing. My hate for this game is very real. This is giving me flashbacks to playing Jack X as a kid. Ellie crosses the finish line. Oh, I hate Jack X. Game is stupid. Nobody's perfect, especially not Jack X. That's as far as far away from perfect as it can physically be. And defeated the notorious Black Fang without taking damage. Good. There we go. Okay. Got him. There we go. Oh, did we do it? We did it! Angel Knives Trophy. That was for beating Black Fang without getting hit. Oh my. Riley tells us that she's supposed to leave for the Fireflies tomorrow, meaning who knows if or when Ellie will see her again. The girls have an argument and Riley storms into the next room, but the two quickly make up and have the water gun fight Ellie has been talking about the whole time they've been in the mall. Got her. And we got skills. I got skills. What are you going to do about it? Anybody think about that guy? I think about that guy from time to time. Ellie then takes the med kit and we make our way back to Joel in the kind of present day, but David's hunter showed up to the mall and tried to stop us from getting back to Joel. After finding a voice recorder, which happened to be the last artifact of the game, I earned the Chronicles trophy. Rip. Chronicles, that? Oh, that was my last artifact. Okay, I gotta be like close to the end of this DLC then too, huh? And then for the first time in my playthrough, I used a bottle to lure some infected by the hunters so that way they could kill them and clear my way out. Making it back to the starting area, I knew all I had to do was make it to the garage door and we were home free, until that wasn't the case. Okay, this should this should do it. Oh, oh, son of a bitch. This was officially the single hardest part of the game for me. A fight against nearly a dozen hunters where I have approximately one arrow, a bottle, and a dream to work with. I started this DLC with approximately 120 deaths, and by the time I was finally finished with that section, that number went all the way up to over 140. There were points during the section where I genuinely felt hopeless because I couldn't figure out the strategy to make it through. Then I realized the only strategy was to dig deep within myself and become him. After upgrading to my final form and about half of the hunters were dead, a myriad of infected showed up to help me clear out the rest of the goons, but then I had to deal with them too. Holy shit. Finally putting the last one down for good, we flash back one final time as Riley and Ellie were running away from another group of infected, where we get our hearts broken one final time. I think it's clear. Ellie. Ellie, your arm. No, 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 no. Don't go. Left behind is done. It can't be for nothing. Oh, that was bittersweet. That's extremely bittersweet, man. With so much more of Joel and Ellie's story to tell, Naughty Dog released The Last of Us Part 2 on June 19th, 2020. 
Unlike part one, in order to 100% The Last of Us part two, we need to beat the game on grounded and with one of the three permadeath settings chosen. Since I didn't want to risk this playthrough taking over 100 hours, I chose the by chapter permadeath setting, meaning that if I died, I would lose the least amount of time possible out of the three. We'll also have to beat the brand new No Return DLC as it came with its own set of 13 trophies, so we have to 100% complete that too. Five years later, Joel and Ellie have made themselves a home at Tommy's settlement in Jackson County, and we quickly learn that things aren't really going great between the pseudo father and daughter as ellie got sent out on a patrol mission with her soon-to-be girlfriend dina the game immediately cuts to a snowy cabin where inside we meet abby and owen some people who are on the hunt for an unnamed man and they think that guy might end up being in jackson after a brief disagreement abby decides to go look for the patrol that owen saw head out a little while beforehand in hopes of getting information about the man a quick switch back to ellie and dina on patrol the pair clears out a full supermarket of infected and after being nearly trapped in a snowstorm they're able to make it to an abandoned library where we got our first trophy Tankerer, was that? That's just for upgrading a weapon, I guess? Just, okay, our first trophy was for upgrading our first weapon. I thought the only trophy related to that was the full upgrade one. I didn't know there was one for just that. That's cool. The pair discuss what's going on between them and rate their kiss from the night before while smoking a little bit of the sticky icky and things end up getting too steamy for YouTube. Returning to Abby's POV, we're sprinting through the same snowstorm as we try to escape a horde of infected and as luck would have it, we ran into Tommy and Joel right as it seemed things were about to go south. After a brief fight and another sprint to escape the infected, they make it to a building where Tommy tells Abby, Hey. Tommy, that's Joel. What's your name? Abby. Abby, are you okay? As she had a shocked look on her face, and she immediately recommends that they go to the mansion her friends are securely located at, and the brothers agree. As soon as they leave on their horses, we're swapped back to the girls where Ellie tells Dina that she's actually immune to the virus, but Dina thinks she's joking, then Jesse shows up and chastises them for fooling around when they're supposed to be on patrol, and that Tommy and Joel never came back, so now they set off to find them. What happens next is something nobody could have anticipated. Abby leads Tommy and Joel back to the cabin with her friends where everything goes to hell. Tommy, this is my brother. Joel. Oh, the air in the room changes immediately. Like, like you heard of us or something. Because they have. You stupid old man. God, it's so brutal. You don't get to rush this. Ellie makes it to the cabin just in time to watch Abby officially put an end to Joel. Please stop. Please don't shoot. Joel, please get up. <laughs> You don't get emotional at that part. You're heartless. I don't care. During the final stop at Joel's house before going on the hunt for Abby, Ellie is stopped by Maria who tells us that Tommy has already left and she wants him brought back safely. The first stop in our hunt for revenge brings us our second trophy. What about here? Hanging on the bench. Oh, Another trading card. card. Nice. Question. If you could have Starter set. Power, How many? Find five trading cards. I didn't even think I had five yet. Oh. Downtown Seattle is the most open area in the game, and we're forced to explore it when the gate to the Saravina Hotel needs to be powered on, but there's no gas anywhere to be found. While exploring, I made my first player upgrade to Ellie. Apprentice. Is that, for, is that just... Oh, learn a player upgrade. Okay, sick. I wasn't sure if that was specifically for the upgrade I made or if that was just for doing an upgrade. That's a W. And then eventually stumbled on a bank where I found a really cool artifact that was a callback to the Uncharted series. That's something, finally. Felt like there was nothing in here. Cool. Little ring. Sick Parvis Magna? Eh. Whatever. So great and small. We snuck into City Hall and made our way down to the flooded garage where thankfully we survived a small horde and we were able to find the gas we needed. I finished my exploring by going to this Fedra truck which added another trophy to our collection. Alright, let's go down here, uh, check out these trucks, and maybe... Maybe I can get up that little waterfall area. I don't think I can. Maybe. I don't know. Truck says fascists. That's... Okay, let's check that out. Sightseer. Trophy earned. That's for every location in downtown Seattle, right? Clearing out the hotel proved to be a pretty quick ordeal, but it did provide us with some important information. We found out that Tommy captured and tortured two of the men, similar to how Joel did in The Last of Us Part 1. Doing that got him, and inadvertently us, the code to unlock the next gate and move forward where we were unfortunately captured. 
Oh shit! Oh no 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 no! I'm just gonna crawl to get kicked again, aren't I? Come on. For some reason out of the entire game, this was the area where I struggled the most. My lack of ammo definitely didn't help here, but most of my problem was that I was playing way too aggressively, and honestly without this section shitting on me the way that it did, odds are this playthrough would have taken me so much longer than it did because I was not playing stealthy at all, and this really changed the way I was playing the game. Surviving all of that, Ellie reads a letter from another member of Abby's group, where in it the TV station is mentioned, so we set out to make it there. On the way there, I maxed out my trusty 9mm pistol to grab the mechanist trophy can upgrade my nine millimeter pistol i have 131 yo i might be able to actually uh fully upgrade my pistol hold on hold on 50 50 uh yeah i'll pop a trophy for this real quick uh, oh i almost upgraded the wrong weapon okay mechanist 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 i can't read today it's mechanist Pushing through more enemies, we finally came to a stop where we discover that the wolves may not be the only group we have to deal with on this journey, and it seems like Tommy has already made his way through here before us, as we find an already dead Leah at the TV station, but in her bag we find a set of photos showing what the rest of the group looks like. After escaping the TV station with a mad dash past a group of WLF members, we end up being chased into the train station where things get a little hairy. Using sounds to lure clickers to take out the wolves, we narrowly escaped to the next part of the train, we ended up making it a bit further just to find a new type of infected and even further mutated creature that the wolves were calling a shambler to me this introduction made it seem like shamblers were going to be way harder to kill than bloaters but they don't absorb nearly as much damage so i don't know why they made them out to seem like such a big deal here goes nothing everything all at once Watch it! i don't know where they're gonna come from oh my god okay give them both hit them both Oh my god. Huh. Ah, I can't believe that worked. I didn't die. Yeah. I don't have any Molotovs or stuns, but I didn't die. I I After a final date with two more Shamblers and their runner friends, we escape and it seems like we're about to make it out of the train station until this happened. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Oh, this is going to lead to some kind of nasty fight, isn't it? Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, no, 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 no. Dina, help. Thank you. Oh, she's going to see that my mask is cracked. Oh, I mean, at least she'll finally believe. Ellie, your mask. Here, we can share mine. No, no, do not take your mask off. Stop, what? No, Ellie, no. Stop, stupid. I already told you. I'm immune. I already told you. I'm not coughing, you see? Go. Yeah, please. No. Oh. Run, Jesus Christ. Ellie. What? <laughs> this section was tricky because I had to be extremely quick between getting the zombie off Dina and continuing our sprint up the steps. It took a few attempts and cost me a decent chunk of time. Oh my god. Jump. Okay. Uh, <laughs> keep running. Keep running. Oh, mother of god. Why are you running so slow? I made it. I made it. I made it. No, 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 no. Shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot it. Thank you. But we were able to make it out safely to the theater where Dina dropped a huge bomb on us. I think I'm pregnant. What? A flashback starts to Ellie's birthday three years ago where Joel took her to the Wyoming Museum of History and Science, and during it, Ellie was able to have a bit of fun at his expense. You put the hat on this guy next. Tiny head. Tiny head. Be a thing. Uh, yeah. Don't let it be a thing. It's a thing, dude. You're just gonna have to get over it, Joel. Oh, I can put the hat on Joel. A third dinosaur. Hey, Joel. Ellie. <laughs> Don't you dare take it off. My Did birthday. he just? He just growl at us. It looks good on you. It looks good on you, Joel. It really, truly does. Look at that. 
Coming back to the present day, we find Dina doing her best investigative work to pinpoint the location of the WLF HQ, and she determines that it's out of their number two station that she believes is located in Hillcrest, so we head there. Hillcrest was absolutely stacked with enemies, both human and infected alike, and it was really difficult to navigate at times. The final stretch of the area was pretty frustrating, but thankfully a death here only set me back to the beginning of the section, so it definitely could have been worse. I did have to try at least one time where I just ran straight through the area to see if I could make it, and I got way closer than I could have imagined. Once I finally made it through, Jesse showed up just in time to save us, and we barely escaped the wolves and infected chasing after us before making it back to the theater. Another flashback starts, and this time we go two years in the past during a patrol job with Tommy and Joel that sees us trying to get to a music store so we can restring Ellie's guitar. The way there was blocked, so instead we went through an old motel that at first seemed to be an easy workaround until we came to a lobby filled with waves of infected and an eventual fight with a bloater. <laughs> How are you alive still? Oh no, 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 no! Oh, Joel, thank God. I didn't think it could run through the tables, but uh, it was clearly meant to run through the tables. The flashback ends with an argument between Joel and Ellie about what happened with the fireflies, and it's clear their relationship is going south because of Joel's lie. Our next target is Nora, who is currently at the hospital. The road to finding her was potentially the scariest part of the game because not only did we have to make it through an entire office full of stalkers, we had to make it through a second office that was littered with stalkers and clickers. Taking a shortcut through a park led us to our first encounter with the other faction of the game, a weird cult called the Seraphites that are responsible for the murals we saw earlier in the game. Honestly, to me, these guys are more annoying than anything with their damned whistling all the time like seriously these guys aren't even that tough oh son of a bitch arriving at the hospital things really start to go off the rails by the sounds of things abby has gone awol like owen did and nora apparently helped her escape so she's not in the good graces of the group at the moment sneaking and of course killing our way to her was tough but the sequence after finding her was actually insane you still hear his screams oh you bitch yeah, that little bitch got what he deserved. Oh, you piece of shit. Fuck you. Throw down your weapon! No, 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 wait. You're gonna tell me what I wanna hear now. How dumb are you? How dumb are you? After getting back to the theater, we find out that Nora did give us some information before her untimely demise and flash back to two years ago where Ellie returned to the St. Mary's Hospital and unfortunately found out what really happened during the end of The Last of Us Part 1, forcing Joel to tell her the truth and ultimately causing a break in their relationship. Tell me what happened here. Joel. Oh, man, you know he's lived with that choice every day since he made it. Taking a vaccine. Would have killed me. I'll go back. But we're done. Ellie and Jesse set out for the aquarium that Abby supposedly may be at, and along the way, I maxed out one of Ellie's skill trees to grab the specialist trophy. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on. That should give me the pills I need to max out this line. Which gives me specialist. Yes. First trophy we've gotten in a little while, feels like. Lots of time and deaths in between that and the last one. After a crazy road there, the two have a bit of a falling out because it's clear that Ellie won't stick to the plan of finding Tommy and returning back home to Jackson. After splitting up, we stole a boat and found our 12th workbench before coming to an abandoned coffee shop that doubled as an arcade and honestly seemed like a pretty dope place to be before this all happened. Workbench. In the field. Is that the last one? Find 12 workbenches. I thought there were way more than that. Trying to unblock the gate broke the floor and we found ourselves face to face with a bloater and some of its friends. Shit. That's not good. That's... Oh, son of a bitch. That's really not good. 
Uh, haven't seen a bloater in a while. Molotovs, Molotovs, please, quickly. Okay, two Molotovs didn't do it. Oh, son of a fucking bitch. Oh, and of course there are other ones. Of course. Keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running, keep running. Where's my shotgun? Where's my shotgun? Fuck off. Fuck off. No. No, 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 no! Son of a bitch! Oh, oh, oh. Where'd you go, Fugly? Oh, holy shit. Almost ran right through me, actually. Ain't that about a bitch? Oh, you gotta be shitting me. Thank God. We ended up making it to the aquarium, and once there, we found Owen and Mel, and things somehow got even worse. We got you now. You're that girl from Jackson. Yeah. I'm gonna went. shoot you in the mouth. You keep talking. How do we know you won't kill us? You give her what I'm, she wants, and we're dead. I might kill you regardless, to be honest. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, bitch. Look, you don't have to die. You don't. I'm. I'm pressing square just in case. There we go. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You don't have to die for this. You don't have to die for this. Well, well, you chose death. Pregnant. Ah, oh, did we just stab a pregnant chick? I knew that hatchet was there because I was about to fight. Oh, she kills Tommy, dude. Stop! Stop! We let you both live. And you wasted it. In what has to be one of the most controversial decisions in video game history, we switch from the scene in the theater to now having full control of Abby in a flashback from four years ago, where we learn why she killed Joel and then start our journey to the present day at the WLF headquarters shortly after the events in Jackson. Things are awkward between Abby and Mel as it's made more and more obvious that Abby and Owen were together before something split them up and now Mel is pregnant with his kid. Before we leave the wolf compound, we're able to grab two trophies, the first for beating Manny in a shooting competition and the second for collecting our fifth commemorative coin. It's here where we find out just how serious this war between the Seraphites, or Scars as they're called, and the wolves really is. Surviving the fight has us escape into an old market where we get into a fight with some infected before heading through the garden section and out to a boat repair shop. More Scars stand between us and the fob, but thankfully the cavalry arrives and saves us when it seemed that there was no way out. Nora tells us that Owen has gone AWOL after supposedly killing Danny to protect a Scar, which lands him on Isaac's bad side. In a meeting with Isaac, he tells us that we're going to be leading the charge, taking the fight to the scars on their island and much to abby's dismay he doesn't want her to go after owen but she decides to take matters into her own hands and do it anyways manny helps her escape and she knows that owen probably went to the aquarium because of a flashback showing the two of them there three years back shortly after joining the wolves on the way there during a heavily infected few buildings i found another callback to one of the games that shaped my childhood finding a relic of the sages aka a precursor orb from jack and daxter oh, what is this Relic of the oh snap that's the uh, that's the precursor word from Jack and Daxter hell yeah I love when they put little Easter eggs in games like this I love Jack and Daxter so much Abby got knocked out and subsequently captured by the scars and during her brief nap we had another flashback to the aquarium where we put our archery skills to the test I did hit them all put my name up there Owen don't hide me from Mel come upstairs I wasn't. Is it that boat being nefarious and then abby gleefully told owen that she found joel's brother showing that this meeting happened right before they took off for jackson abby comes to in a scene that i really can't show you where she ends up dangling from a rope while meeting two young scar kids called yara and lev yara also happened to get her wings clipped during this scene and i definitely can't show you that either the kids are being hunted by their own people but at the moment it isn't made clear why ah oh, come on This is... That hammer hits me one time, I'm dead. Come on, Rhonda. I just assume your name's Rhonda. You look like a Rhonda. Nope. Uh-uh. No. <laughs> Rhonda tried two swings. Didn't work at it. Didn't work at all, Rhonda. Didn't work at all. Nope. Get out of here. You're trying to choke slam me like the Undertaker, Rhonda. Who do you think you are? You're about to die with your own hammer, Rhonda.
We escape to a garage where we take a quick breather before continuing up a trail to another bombed out building. The door was barred from the outside, so we pushed the kids through a small window so they could go and open the door, but after hearing the sounds of some infected, it seems like they left us out to dry. I ended up crafting some ammo for my hunting pistol, which happened to be the last item I needed to craft for tools of the trade, and thankfully right after that, the Scar Kids did come back for us and we narrowly escaped. We left them in a trailer and continued on the path to the aquarium, reaching a section where I decided to try and make a run for it rather than burning more ammo on infecteds, and much to my surprise and heart rate, it worked out. Alright, run. Run and pray I can go. Jump, 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 do not stop jumping. I don't know what this is, but grab it really quick. What? Where am I supposed to go? Oh, no, 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 no. Please, for the love of all, let us only jump. Oh! Not great. We fell into the water with the aquarium in sight and were able to swim to a nearby boat, but naturally there were several clickers there. I was really happy I decided to conserve that ammo in the last area because I definitely needed it here. After opening a safe on the top level and getting the last training manual, I had to deal with a myriad of clickers, runners, stalkers, and even a shambler on the poop deck. The training manual, that's nice. Identify, counter, and destroy. Journeyman. Is that the... Last training manual? Find all training manuals. Hell yeah. We made it to the aquarium and found Owen drunk and trembling, clearly shaken up after whatever happened, and the two of them proceed to enjoy each other's company a little too much. In a surprising twist, Abby goes back to get the kids and bring them to the aquarium so Mel can operate on Yara's arm and help her out. Unfortunately, the supplies needed to perform a successful surgery aren't available, so we have to sneak into the wolf hospital and get them. Lev agrees to show us a secret route that the Scars use to avoid the wolves, and it leads to a section that I personally call the building from hell. Before delving down further into the building, we open a safe which ends up being the last one of the game. After searching for a gas mask for Lev, we end up finding one that I don't really think this guy needs anymore. The way down proved to be full of scares too, and the final exit was blocked by a group of clickers being flanked by a big old bloater at the end of the hallway. Move, Lev, move. Holy hell. Where do we go? Okay. Once out of there, we were right at the gate of the hospital, and they let us in without many questions, but Abby did make a crucial mistake by telling them that Isaac sent her there to get supplies. After meeting up with Nora, the guys from the gate tell us they talked to Isaac, and that they know Abby has been AWOL, so she's now going to be taken into custody and sent back to the HQ when the next shipment leaves. Nora lets us go, and we search the hospital's lower floor for the supplies we need, but once we finally find them, something found us. Oh, Perfect. Get ready to celebrate. Okay. I don't... What in the hell is that? No. 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 Kick. No. Come on, I'm spamming the square button. You can kick more than what you're doing. Uh... Haha, <laughs> not good. Don't love this at all. Please run. <laughs> Where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? Shit, shitty, shit, shit. Oh no. Get up, get up, get up. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you're kidding me. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Kill it! Oh, the axe broke. 
The Rat King, as it's so lovingly called, is the hardest single boss in the game unless you know how to handle this fight, because if you do, even on grounded, it ends up being not that difficult unless you get caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. No! I jumped right into it! Okay. Now, let's try the fight bombs again. Spam the down arrow. And now we run. Now we run. Now we run. Keep running. Yes! Moving to the next room to dispose of the little shit leads us to the doorway out of this place. Back at the aquarium, we find out Yara's surgery has gone well, but things aren't great between the siblings, as Yara wants to go to Santa Barbara with Owen and Mel, but Lev wants to try and convince their mother to come with them. Mel tells Abby she's not welcome to come with them to Santa Barbara because... You're a piece of shit. We found out the reason that Lev was shunned by the Seraphites, and it's because Lev was actually born a girl and named Lily, and the Seraphites don't believe in atypical gender roles or gender identities or things like that. Once again, please don't get political in my comments, I'm just explaining the story. Lev officially ran away to their home island, and Yara leads us there as we end up running into Manny on the highway. He ends up saving us from a sniper off in the distance. The sniper ends up being Tommy, and we have to get creative to avoid his shots because we all know how great of a shot Tommy is with a sniper. Crawling our way under the water and behind a cart, we make it to the garage where now Tommy's shots are aimed at vehicles to draw it infected. It works, but we do manage to kill all of the infected and chase after him. But unfortunately, Manny is killed and in the aftermath, thanks to Yara, Tommy gets tossed into the water. We took a boat and made it to the island where everything was about to somehow get even worse than it already is. The wolves launched their attack on the island as we made it to Yara and Lev's hut, but we found a broken down Lev there with their mother's body laid out on the floor. Now back with both the kids, we were trying to escape the island and happened to find the final coin to complete Abby's collection. Coin. Numismatist. Numis numismatist? Numis numis numismatist. I got all the coins. We ran into Isaac in the woods where Yara is killed but manages to hold on just long enough to save us one final time. Abby and Lev fight their way through the rest of the island before one final fight with a brute. Not after all this are we gonna let this kid die. Oh my god. You're a damn disgrace. Nice. Oh my god, hook his face. Oh my god, I just made his smile bigger. He looks like the Joker. Whoop, whoop. Oh, son of a bitch, I got a little cocky. Do not show any mercy. Finish him. Oh my god, his whole face is open. Oh, that's so gross. No. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he let me go, all right. This dude is still a... Oh my god, he has an arrow through his heart! How are you fine? How are you fine? Come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, she's ripping his face out. Coming back to the aquarium, you already know the deal. Abby finds Owen and Mel's bodies after Ellie was there, and as luck would have it, Ellie forgot to bring her map back to the theater, so Abby's able to find them, and we resume right where we left off, with Jesse dead and Tommy seemingly about to join him. Abby and Ellie finally have their fight, and as much as I hated being on this side of it, I can't say I disagree with Abby coming back for revenge. Ellie did manage to cut my ass a few times, but at the end, to progress the story, I had to win the fight as Abby, who only stopped the beating when she heard Dina's pregnant. The next scene shows us at a farmhouse where Ellie and Dina are living happily with their baby boy JJ, but it's quickly revealed that Ellie is suffering from severe PTSD and a surprise visit from Tommy who somehow survived that gunshot told us that Abby was spotted in Santa Barbara and after a lot of pushback from Dina, Ellie decides she has to go after her to end everyone's suffering once and for all. In our final journey as Abby, we took control of her and Lev as they found a house with a functioning radio and we used that radio to talk to what we thought were fireflies, but as soon as we left the house, we found out just how wrong that assumption was. Sometime later, Ellie arrives in Santa Barbara and while looking for Abby, we can't to the neighborhood where she and Lev were captured and managed to set off a trap and get captured ourselves, but Ellie reminds everyone just how much of a savage she really is. Something funny? Looks 
I can show your pants. Nice. Tall round building. High caliber. Uh oh, that SMG must have been the last weapon I needed. Hell yeah. We snuck our way past pretty much all of the guards, aside from a few that we had to kill to make things easier, and made our way to the compound. We found the final workbench, so we were once again prepared for the worst, and the final Savage Starlight trading card. I knew I had to use every bit of stealth in my body in order to survive this area because there was a metric fuck ton of guards. We managed to grab the final collectible in the game to earn the Archivist trophy, and then made it past all of the guards, including a group that tried to fight us off at the end, just to find out that Abby may have already been killed because she and Lev tried to run away from the slavers running the compound. The final fight with Abby and Susan, much like the earlier fight between the two, I just had to lose the fight and start over. Fuck, I, I, I keep getting stuck on something. What the hell am I stuck on? I'm gonna die. I literally- oh my god. Oh. I've been patient this whole place, man. Gotta be patient now. Come on. Nice. Come on. Put it in there. Put it in there. Put it in there. Nice. End it. End it. End it. She bit my finger off. That absolutely just breaks my soul, dude. Even Abby, as much as I like, I've always been on the Ellie side of things. Like, what both of them went through is a hell that I would not wish on, like, my most hated enemy. It's, it's, it's such a sombering shot to end this with Ellie just destroyed sitting in the water and allowing the one person that took it from her took everything from her to just go completed the story on permadeath grounded 40 hours 37 minutes time lost to deaths 20 hours 35 minutes killed 101 times i can't believe i only died 101 times i'm actually baffled return so i'm good on that what i had to do i had to complete the story Dig two graves. I beat the game on grounded. And then lastly, you can't stop this. Beat the game on any permadeath setting. Taking our talents to New Game Plus, I decided this playthrough would be a fun one after the hell we just endured, so I used in game cheats and mods so we could breeze through this and get the final three trophies of the story. Pop it. Arms Master. Every weapon upgrade is done. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think that's it. That's all we needed. Survival expert trophy earned and the platinum trophy in three, two, one. Every last one of them. That's massive. Normally after earning the platinum trophy on a game, we'd be done, but in this case, we're going for 100% completion. So we have to beat the no return DLC. This mode features roguelike gameplay and it allows you to play as several characters that we met throughout the story, like Dina and Jesse or Yara and Lev. There are a handful of modes like assault, hunted, capture, and holdout that each feature their own unique play styles. And you can face any of the three enemy factions in the game. The trophies for the most part are pretty simple, like roll call and good riddance, but there are definitely some that require big time grinds like Team Abby and Team Ellie. 
Actually, Mixed Bag was the first one I grabbed that I got for using five different weapons to get a kill in the Assault game mode, which I actually got during my very first match. I managed to grab Become the Hunter and True Strength during the same match for killing 12 or more enemies in the Hunted game mode, and I got an S tier rank for doing that. No Return has these little challenges that will be randomly given to you throughout your runs called Gambits, and successfully doing five of them in one run earned me the Risk Taker trophy. During a capture mission, I was able to use my top tier stealth skills to sneak up to the safe and grab Burglar. One of the harder trophies of No Return was Got Your Back, where I had to keep my allies' health above 70% during a round of holdout, which tends to be the most hectic of these modes because the enemies don't stop coming after you the entire time until they're all dead. There are six bosses in the mode, and to get good riddance, we had to kill all of them at least once. Once I finished all of the challenge for Ellie's friends and got her spacesuit, it was time to move on to Abby and her people. Mods get randomly applied throughout your runs, and in total there are 26 of them, which I definitely should have been keeping track of, because once I got to 25 out of 26, I wasn't sure what mod I still needed. Luckily, I noticed the Pustule Rain mod during a run, and I was sure that I had never seen it before, and it ended up being the last one. After finishing off the Team Abby challenges and earning Roll Call for finishing a run with every character, it was now time for the final two trophies. May your survival be long, and May Your Death Be Swift are earned by beating a daily run of No Return and for doing one on Grounded as well. I decided in my infinite wisdom that instead of doing these individually, I was going to stack them up and do them at the same time, and it ended up being the most frustrating thing about this entire game. After failing the daily run every day from the day after launch, for about a week, I knew I had to lock it in when I saw a run with Yara and Lev that would end with me facing the Seraphite Elite boss, which to me was the easiest boss in No Return, until it wasn't. I made a huge mistake off the rip getting noticed, and the entire fight was basically me running around the map praying to not get clapped by the Seraphites. I'm gonna let this clip play out, so thank you guys all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Smash that like goal for me. Make sure you hit your subscribe button if you did enjoy this video and made it this far. My name's Travis, and I'll catch you in the next one. No. Fuck all the way off. You kidding me? Oh, he's still following me. Fuck. I didn't realize the big fucker was the one behind me. Son of a bitch. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is not good. Get the fuck out of here. Lev, I need your help, dude. They went in the grass. Okay. Oh my god, did they burn themselves? Ugh. Okay. I think we're just down to the boss. I think we're just down to the boss. Where are you at?
Oh, I did it! I did it! I did it! Oh! I did it! Oh! That was so hard, dude. I'm sure someone in the comments can be like, dude, it wasn't even that hard, bro. Eat a bag of dicks. All right, it was hard for me.